Hey, y'all. How's everybody doing? Yeah, yes. Thank you. That's that end of day energy that we all need. Um, and if you weren't here, we would feel that. I do have one uh, housekeeping note that you've probably heard by this point, but you can open up your app and submit questions. That will be happening for our online audience as well. And then at the end, I will be able to go through those um, and make sure that all of the cues are aid, as Tom put it uh, so brilliantly. So I'm Amy O'Connor. I work for JAMF uh, in communications. I am excited to introduce my friend Tom to talk with you about patch notifications. Tom. Hi. Uh, thank you. Thanks. Thanks for coming to this, my session about uh, customizing JAMF self-service patch notifications. Uh, as Amy said, my name is Tom Martin. I am the uh, Mac admin for the College of Social and Behavioral Sciences Technical Services, uh, which is a bit of a mouthful, at the University of Arizona. Uh, we do call ourselves SBS for short, because of, that's a lot of words. Um, just a little quick background, how I got to where I am in the late 90s. I know like many of us uh, got our start doing IT stuff in our school computer labs. For me, that was the fine arts labs at the University of Arizona as a music undergrad. Uh, and I continued to dabble in ID, IT um, over the years, trying to stay as Apple focused as I could until I ended up back at U of A in 2010 as uh, the Mac guy with the uh, SBS desktop team. And uh, eventually built up our uh, Mac admin situation. Uh, and yes, I do still do music for that degree. A little bit about SBS, we are one of the largest units on campus. Uh, we have about 950 faculty and staff and about 8,300 students, both graduate and undergraduate, in 27 departments. Uh, those including, I'm not gonna say them all, uh, but journalism, history, geography, communication, philosophy. So as you can imagine, our faculty in particular are anywhere from researchers to instructors to authors and our student advisors. Uh, so their tech user experience runs the spectrum from our tech experts who just, I'm fine, leave me alone, to our tech phobic, please don't make me be alone with a computer. Uh, about six years ago, we finally had to accept that our homegrown environment of Deploy Studio and Workgroup Manager and Monkey was broken uh, because they didn't update with Apple. <laughs> uh, so we ended up joining the Jamf community. These are some photos from our journalism computer labs where we started with Jamf. Um, and as our Mac guy, again, it was my job to build it. In our labs, uh, we don't want to notify users about patches uh, because we don't want to waste valuable class time waiting for students and teachers to install stuff. So in the labs, everything kind of just runs itself. Our faculty and staff, however, are still largely the wild, wild west. Uh, for years, the lore among our faculty uh, has been, hey, if you buy a Mac, SBS Tech has to give you admin access and you can do whatever you want. And then they still put in tickets for us to come update Flash for them. <laughs> uh, about two years ago, I got the okay to start expanding our Jam footprint out from the labs to our faculty and staff max. So we are still largely taming the Wild West uh, in our environment. Um, and we have learned some things like our faculty and staff max. We cannot just auto patch all the apps because a lot of them are working unusual hours. They may be collaborating with people in other countries. Uh, or doing overnight studies or whatnot. Uh, so if an app automatically quits to patch, say, while they're running a large data set or something, because they didn't know there was a patch available, that's a problem. So we have to give our faculty and staff an opportunity to update their stuff themselves before we force it. So why do we need to customize our patch notifications? If they're enabled, uh, well, the first thing is to uh, reduce notification fatigue. Everyone has notifications coming in from everything. If we have notifications enabled on our patch policies, our users receive a notification for every single patch title that is released. 
If it's just Firefox, not a big deal. If it's after Patch Tuesday and you're deploying a dozen or more patches, that's a lot of notifications. And it tends to annoy people. Also, we want to ensure that a notification does happen at all. There is actually a PI in Jamf right now, a product issue, where uh, self-service notifications may not happen. If the user doesn't know that the app is ready to be patched, they can't patch it. So that was a problem. That's actually how we discovered we needed a solution like this. And we do want to be just annoying enough that we help our users keep their stuff updated. So this workflow has four basic building blocks. We have our patch policies, a smart computer group, a Jamf helper script, and the computer policy that makes it all go. So block one, the patch policies. I'm going to assume we know how to uh, set patch definitions and build patch policies, so we're not going to start there. If, you're, if you've never done that and you don't know where that is, Jamf's documentation is pretty good on this. I will go over some settings, though, on our uh, general settings. Obviously, we want the patch to be enabled. We want to set what target that we want, wish to be deployed. And we want to be sure it's set to be distributed via self-service. Then under the user interaction tab, we're going to uncheck display notifications for the patch policy. Because if you're not having that PI problem, we don't want to double notify our users about stuff. Because otherwise, we're just making the problem worse. We want to enable the self-service update deadline. Wrong button. Sorry, whoever I just pointed with the green laser. Uh, we want to make sure we check the uh, uh, uncheck the place display notifications, enable self-service update deadline, and the grace period. The update deadline is how many days the user has to update the app themselves before we force it. The grace period is how much time they have to save their work and quit the app when they've hit that deadline. Then we're going to build our smart computer group. This is how, of course, we get the notifications to the users who need it. Our group looks something like this. Obviously, it's going to have a lot more titles. But first, we want to set our target computer group. For you, this could be production, or testing, or labs, or staff. Um, then we're going to set between the parentheses all of our different patch titles that we want to alert people about when there's something new. Um, help future you, be nice to future you, build this list alphabetically <laughs> so that when you're updating patches, it's easier. Um, yes, you can use the API to download the group, edit the XML file, and re-upload it to get it in a nice alphabetical order if you need to, but that is not in the scope of what I'm going over today. And everything between the parentheses needs to use the or operator because we want them to fall into this group whether any of those is out of, out of date. So where do we find these patch reporting criteria? Let's add one. We're going to have to dig down into the advanced criteria to find that. And then we can scroll down and find patch reporting software title and hit choose. And then we're presented of a, uh, with a list of every single patch title that we have configured in Jamf. Um, this list, you may notice, is not alphabetical. So you may just have to Command F to find what you're looking for if you've got a whole bunch. We want to make sure the operator is less than, and then the value is going to be the version of the app we're deploying. You can type that version in. Um, that's an introduce, uh, possi possibly, that's a way to possibly introduce human error. So I like to click the little dots. And here we're going to see every version of the app that Jamf knows about. And right there at the top, so conveniently located, is latest version. We don't want to use that. Uh, it, one, it won't work. Two, if it did work, uh, 
we would start sending notifications to our users as soon as Jamf is aware there's a new version, whether or not we've actually got that new package uploaded and deployed. So what we want to do is choose the version we want to deploy. Then we have the third block, the script. This is a Jamf helper script, bash script. Um, please be kind to early scripting me. This was fresh off of my 300 course, and I was excited to apply some new knowledge and um, still learning some other things. <laughs> so we're going to set a whole bunch of variables first. I set all of the things, the options in the Jamf helper window as variables in here. Uh, it just makes it cleaner when you get into the part of the script that does the stuff. It's easier to see what's happening and where errors might be, uh, particularly if you're relatively new to scripting. So we're going to define the title bar. We're going to put a path to an icon to display with the message, uh, as well as the initial alert message. And we've got a second one in here. We pop up a second little window if someone says, no, I don't want to patch right now. Um, so we give them a second message that says, OK, but we're going to bug you again tomorrow. Here is uh, some of the functionality, var functionality variables. We've got a shortcut to Jamf Helper. I realize I have two different ways of getting the console user. I don't remember why I did that, because I didn't comment it well enough. Um, but that's how the script is working right now, and I just haven't gone back to try to simplify that. Then we get to the part where we do the things. So we're going to check if the current who the current user is. If the current user is not root, that means a human is logged into the Mac. And we're going to send the initial Jamf helper alert button, uh, help, helper alert with two buttons. One is self-service, and that's the default. And the other is not now. Uh, we do have a one-hour timeout in there in case the user is logged in but away from their keyboard say they just didn't log out when they went to spring break or on sabbatical or any other number of things that our users like to do. Uh, we don't want that alert sitting there, Jeff waiting for a response to it. So we put a, a one hour timeout on it and it's going to default to the self-service button if that happens. So if they click self-service or let the timer run out, we're going to open self-service for them directly to the notifications tab where all of the updates that are available will be listed for them to install at their convenience. And like I said, if they said not now, then we're going to display the patch declined message. And finally, if that first check returned that the user, current user is root, then we're just going to quietly exit the script and, and write to the log that there's no user logged in. And I do have the script on GitHub here. Um, I think these slides are being made available after the conference. Um, if not, you can hit me up and I can get it for you. And then we have the computer policy, which ties all of these other parts together. So we're going to make our basic computer policy. We want it to run at recurring check-in. And for our environment, we want that to run once every day because we only want to bug our users once a day about this. Optionally, you can set a client-side limitation. Um, say you don't want the script running when people aren't likely to be working. So tell it not to run between like 6 p.m. and 8 a.m. so that we're more likely to catch a human at the Mac. Then we're going to put our script payload in. Uh, the priority before or after does not matter because this is the only thing this policy is doing is running this gem helper script. And then you scope it to your computer group that we set up before. So we've got it built. Sweet. What does it look like? Here's what our users see on the initial notification. It says, hey, updates are available for one or more apps on this Mac. Please update them at your earliest convenience. If you don't, then it will, the app will quit if the uh, app will force quit if it's running when the deadline passes. Um, and we're going to bug you about this about every day 
uh, or about every 24 hours until everything's patched. So we're telling them, expect this if you don't, if you don't uh, do what we ask. So again, they click self-service or the timer runs out. Hey, look, let's update this stuff. If they say, mm, no, not right now, I'm in a Zoom, I'm teaching, whatever. We understand, it's not a good time. But this will appear in roughly 24 hours if nothing's patched, or if, if everything isn't patched yet, so thanks. So what do we do when new patches are released? Because that happens all the time. The first thing you want to do is obviously get your patches into your Jamf instance and tested via your favorite methods. Um, and then I like to go into our patches available policy and edit the server side limitation um, to a future date and time. Uh, I do this for a couple of reasons. One is uh, our users complained about me doing my job while they were trying to do their jobs. Understandable. And I got tired of logging in after hours to do this. And I went, oh yeah, Jamf has this function. Why not use it? So we do that. Then we're gonna edit our patch policies to deploy the new versions to production. One of the really cool things about this is here we have our, our self-service with our branding. As uh, patches become available, as the computer falls into scope of these patch policies, they're gonna start getting that little red dot on self-service. So for those users who are like me and hate those little red dots on their apps, they're gonna go and update their stuff without us even nagging them. So I actually like to set the activation time a couple of days after I go live with stuff just to give our users a chance to do their chores without asking. And then we're gonna go in and edit our patches available smart group with all of the new version numbers. This is where having that alphabetized is gonna help you. Um, please learn from my mistakes. Do not update the smart computer group until you have actually updated all of your patch policies. I did this once, um, and we started getting tickets of, hey, y'all are telling me I've got patches available and there's nothing in self-service. And here's where they split. Some are, what did I do? How do I fix it? And some are, what are you doing to my Mac? So just make sure you've actually updated your patch policies before you update that smart group. So with these four blocks together, we can help our users keep their tech patched while hopefully reducing interruptions to their work. Um, is this workflow a little bigger lift for us on the back end when deploying patches? Yeah, it, it kind of is. Um, is it worth it for our users' experience? I think so, and I hope they think so. Um, what about, I know there's great tools out there, Swift Dialog, IBM Notify, or something else. What about switching to something like that? I've had that on my list to explore, but uh, just haven't had a chance to dig into it. And what if that PI gets fixed where the self-service notifications are working? I actually think this is a little bit more elegant because you get one notification regardless of how many apps need to be updated, as opposed to one notification for every single app. And that's what I've got, unless anyone has any uh, questions. We do have questions, Ooh, Tom. Fun. All right. I'm going to start with this. What tools and methods are you using to automate the acquisition and importation of application patches into Jamf Pro? Auto package, installomator, GitHub Actions, something else. Great question. We use, uh, I use auto package for most of them. Um, there are a couple of weird apps that I haven't been able to find recipes for and just haven't taken the time to write them. Um, but yeah, we use app auto package to grab most of our patches. Awesome, thank you. Uh, what happens if said user is presenting, is, sorry, is that going to pop up? Oh, if the person is presenting, is, the, uh, is that going to pop up or display the assertions are in use? Uh, I'm afraid it will at this point, yeah. Okay. I know some of, like, uh, I think Swift Dialog has the ability it will uh, respect what the user is doing and something like that. Uh, but yeah, this could potentially interrupt your user's work during a presentation. Uh, that's why I tend to schedule 
the notification to start at like 4.55 p.m. The next, on the day it goes live. Sure. So that it's at the end of the day, hopefully most of our users are wrapped up with their work right. or they're already out and they'll see it first thing in the morning. Right on, thank you, that's a good question. Um, can you set a max deferral for users, meaning after three 24-hour windows, can it just force the install? Uh, I don't believe that's a function in patch, man in, uh, patch policies, no. It's you, there, I think there's just one deferral window. You can set that window for as long as you want it to be. We happen to use a week. Um, if it's a super mission critical patch, uh, you can set it to one day. You could set it to, I think you could put like 30 days in there if you wanted to. Awesome. Uh, if the user does delay, does the script wait in the background, preventing check-in from running? No, no. Uh, the policy is set to run it once a day, as long as the computer is in that smart group. So as long as their apps aren't patched, they're still in that smart group. And when those patches are run and updated, they update inventory and fall out of that group. Great. Is there a similar solution for iOS? Uh, I don't have one. Um, our iOS environment is minimal. We've got about 300, a little over 300 Macs in our Jamf instance right now, and I think 14 iPads. So. Um, I know you touched on different tools, but there is a question of any plans to migrate from Jamf Helper, Helper to Swift Dialog. And I mentioned that, yeah, there's, I would love to, I just haven't had the bandwidth to dig into it, but I know it's a great tool. Awesome. Uh, curious to hear thoughts on how your third-party patching workflow might change next as the OS updates migrate to declarative device management, or maybe you wouldn't make that change. Uh, I don't know yet. I mean, this, this is app updates, not OS updates. Sure. So it's kind of a different thing. I don't know. I don't know at this time. <laughs> yep. Perfectly fine answer. Um, let's see. Uh, we're getting down there, folks. Are there questions from the audience? Yeah. So the question is, uh, Tom, great session. Are you doing any other sessions? Uh, actually, yes. Uh, I'm doing a session tomorrow with Mark and Amy and Callie from Jamf on community at Jamf tomorrow morning at nine. At nine. Nine. Yeah. yeah, I don't remember where we are, but it should be it should I think be it's fun. Ballroom E. Yeah, there we are. Yeah. Ballroom E. Um, I'll just follow you there. How there about you go. that? Okay, that's good. Um, any other questions from the room? It's very bright up here, so you'll just have to shout. If you There's do. a hand over there. Yeah. How many, uh, statistics uh -huh. on how many, just so everybody can hear, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Uh, statistics on how many people are patching early, early before they get to the note. Uh, I haven't paid super close attention, but I do know that it, it's a, at least a handful, because occasionally I'll go in to check something and I'll just happen to notice that the uh, production patch group has already run on a handful of Macs for some apps, and I'm like, oh, well, the nag hasn't gone live yet, so cool. <laughs> yeah, right on. Um, so why use this workflow to deploy patches instead of Jamf's app installers? Uh, because Jamf's app installers were not in the world yet when we <laughs> ran into the problem of needing this. Um, and I haven't since, because this is working for us, uh, had time to really dive into testing app installers. Cool, that makes sense. Uh, an application like Google Chrome releases approximately five to six software updates every month. If we were to wait to test each version individually, it could pose a security risk because Chrome would not be kept up to date. What are your thoughts on this? Uh, that's, you know, they, that's going to have to be up to the needs of your environment and your organization, really. Um, and you're absolutely correct. Waiting instead of deploying right away is potentially a vulnerability vector. Is there a reason that you have your user um, root exit rather than just install? Show it to you too. I think it's part of the script. Uh, you know, is, or if it's root, just install the update. Uh, because as far as I know, and I could be wrong, and if I am, I would love to learn how to do it, if no one's logged in, um, then the self-service policy, policy can't be triggered. Ah, uh, that makes sense. Yeah. Jam, Jam Helper doesn't display when no one's logged in. 
That too, Jamf Helper does not display when no one's logged in. So, yeah, there's, we don't want the notification to yeah. try to run if no one's logged in. That makes sense. Yeah. Good Thank call. You. Yeah. If the user, oh, nope. I had my eyes on one and then another one popped up. Uh, it's the end of the day here, people. Sorry about that. Um, there was one, though. What types of logs are provided during and after this process? Uh, that's an excellent question and not something I've dug into. <laughs> what tools and methods are you using to automate? Nope, we did that one already. Folks, I think we're back to in-person questions if there are others. Oh, there's one over here. Yeah, go ahead, I'll repeat it. So any troubled children apps? Any problematic apps that we have to tweak each time? Um, no, uh, nothing suit. I mean, yeah, the stuff that's, yeah, we've got Office and Firefox, Chrome, uh, Teams, uh, pretty much your standard Zoom. And then the, the weird stuff is, is, or the uncommon stuff is Audacity, R, R Studio, Prot, things like that. And they're all pretty much, a lot of those are just drag and drop. Um, that annoys me a little bit because I have to repackage them manually um, with my current workflow. But otherwise, yeah, it's not too bad. Awesome, awesome. Thanks for grabbing that. That was the question that disappeared right before my eyes. Oh. What? Yep. For your uh, Jamf repository list of like patches, as you maintain your own, do you just rely on Jamf's list? Um, the question was, do we have our own repository and list of of apps that need to be passed, or we do we rely on Jamf's library of what they know about? Uh, we haven't had anything. We don't have anything in in uh, production that isn't in Jamf's library so far. So that hasn't been an issue. Um, so yeah, we just rely on, I get a notification from Jamf says, hey, there's a new version of this, there's a new version of that. And, and then I get it uploaded and tested and deployed. Yes. Oh. I haven't really had much feedback on it other than when I messed it up. <laughs> um, so I think, I think they're in favor of it. Um, we do occasionally get, there are too many patches. Things need updating too much. It's like, you know, welcome to my world. <laughs> and in some ways, like, no news is good news, right? Because yeah. it, the, the system is working and you're getting those patches. If our faculty are not happy, they will let us know. <laughs> I suppose there are a few people in the room that understand that. Um, let's see what else we've got here, guys. Oh, I'm sorry if you covered it and missed it. How do you set smart groups to less than? It looks like mine only offer like and not like. Interesting. I wonder if that's new. Um, so the um, go to add, advanced, patch reporting titles, choose it, add it. And um, it was just in the drop-down menu for me. Yeah, that's interesting. Bug us after, so yeah. I'm curious about that one. I see a hand back there. I just have an answer. Oh. The user's not selecting patch report, like the patch reporting title. It might be selecting an application version. Uh, yeah, that would do it. Yeah, make sure, for, for our friends online, uh, make sure you're choosing the patch reporting title, not application version. Perfect, that makes sense. You'll get a different drop down there. Anything else from the room? Everybody's starting to feel like it's happy hour time, <laughs> and you're not wrong about that. Cool. We're getting there. If you have other questions, yeah, 
find Tom. Uh, yeah. Connect on LinkedIn. You know, come yeah, to our I session am, uh, tomorrow morning. Tom M on Jamf Nation. Tom Martin on the Mac Admin Slack. My cat tax. They would like you all to know that they're being horribly neglected because I'm not there. <laughs> um, speaking of on uh, the Mac Admin Slack, I spend a lot of time in the Jamf Heroes channel. The Jamf Heroes program is an amazing thing. I'm going to do a little plug there. If you haven't gone and talked to those folks on the expo floor, highly recommend it. They're fantastic. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you, Tom, for yeah. this knowledge, and thank you all for being here. Thank you.